I might have something to swim in with it. There we go. It's it's a little sketchy. It's basically it's just somebody's backyard, but you say you like know a spot where people have got in or maybe not. Oh, okay. I think I think I see you got to kind of go deeper into this other public neighborhood and then there's like a cul-de-sac or some I'll call you when I when I'm pulling up and we'll figure it out. All right, sounds good. All right, y'all, look at what we have stumbled upon today. A beautiful looking pond with an island. Is this for real? Christian, what's good? What's going on, man? Ah, we're gonna be hanging out on the kayaks today. We might do a little mystery tackle box fish and we might just throw our regular old confidence baits, but this place looks juicy. No matter what we're throwing, we're gonna have a good old time, dude. Reeds along the edge, looks to be clear water, grass all over the place. We got a lot of opportunity here and I'll tell you what, I doubt the island is getting hit very much because there doesn't look to be too many people who fish this place and for the people who do, who knows if they're bringing the yaks out. So we're gonna go ahead just uh, talk less and work a little more getting these yaks in the water. We'll catch up with y'all in a second and tell you more about what we got planned for today. Not too much, how you doing? Good. 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 No sir, we're gonna try and fish this good. Did you see the smoke truck fast inside? I did. Okay. Okay. by that one and turned around by one up there. Okay. Yeah. I hear you. We've, we've yeah. had too much problems with people coming over and damaging the dock. Of course. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I had never even heard of this spot, so I'm not telling anybody about it. I was just looking it up and figured we'll give it a shot. Yeah, I was just saying on that app that people found it. It's called Fish Brain. Fish Brain, yeah, just take a look at it because there's like, there's like 40 some people that are putting the catches here, so. Okay. I'll look at it and see if I can comment on it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, that didn't last long at all. We got kicked out by the HOA president. He says that uh, this is a private lake and only residents are allowed to fish this thing, that they pay a lot of money to stock this and keep it kept up right, and that we need to get the heck out of here. So we're going to do just that. We're going to be kind and polite. Uh, it would have been an excellent looking spot to fish, but it is no longer on the list. I'm going to go ahead and lock the kayak up. We're going to try something down the street, see what we can't get into. Oh, you told me you did YouTube and all that? Huh? You told me you did. Yeah, I told him I did YouTube. What'd he say? <laughs> I introduced myself. I said, Weston Smith. And he said, I'm gonna look you up. I said, please do. <laughs> yeah, man, here's my take on that. When it comes to getting kicked out, you just gotta be kind to people. Obviously, there's no fish in here. They were real kind about it. I tried to be kind and respectful in return. And uh, who knows, maybe they'll invite me back out to fish here one day. It's all up in the air. If they knew that this is like what I'm trying to do to provide for my family, put food on the table and literally uh, make a career out of it, maybe they would have offered to let us stay for five, 10 minutes knowing that we're not gonna trash the place, not gonna give it up, all these things, and maybe they wouldn't have. Either way, no big deal. Christian is loading up and we're gonna try and find another spot in the area. I told them about the Fish Brain app though and I said there's a lot of people logging catches here and so that is why we wanted to try this spot. You guys are very familiar with the Fish Brain app. Uh, I talk about it a lot and how we find places to fish so uh, we're gonna hop back on that, find something else in the area. Camera's probably gonna fall because we're off-road right now. Got the system, man. Oh, got a little water left in there from the last visit I see. We've hit this spot before. Christian's already in there. We'll be there in two seconds. Okay guys, so for today's video, I have spared y'all the expense of having to watch me set up the kayak. I normally always show the whole process, I feel like, but today's a little bit different. We, uh, we gotta get a move on, man. It's now 626, so we got two hours before sunset, probably another half hour after that of uh, good light to catch these puppies. And then I gotta get home and start working on today's video because I'm 106 days in a row without missing a day for posting uploads on YouTube. Um, and I'm gonna continue that streak, so tonight I'm gonna start editing probably about 10 o'clock to get this video up. It doesn't necessarily have to be by midnight to meet my standards, just before I go to sleep. So maybe I post one at like one or two in the morning because that's when I get to it. And then the next day it comes out like midday, so it looks like there's two posted in one day, but I just consider that one a day. Anyways, enough of that. I actually need y'all's help with something. I've got comments from like plenty of y'all now about how these scupper plugs are like draining, okay? So water shouldn't be coming up through the boat, but yet it should be letting the water out. Well, whenever I got a lot of water in here, I notice it drains a lot better when I pull these things out. So tell me if there's something I'm not doing because like this piece right here, let me do this. Is this camera gonna sit still? No, put y'all on the rods. Okay, so like this scupper plug, like this comes apart. Do I need to like, if I leave this open, then water's just gonna come right up. So I'm, I'm kind of confused. I guess this piece stays in 
and and somehow water's supposed to drain through these scupper plugs i haven't figured it out but anyways i noticed there was a lot less water as soon as i took these things out so let me know how these things are supposed to drain the boat while still being in the boat or if there's another piece i need to add or something pop that right back in there we're gonna put it to the test because we're about to drop in and we'll see how good it does okay real quickly last things y'all i'm gonna drop my shades in the dry storage i am going to get my rudder free from this thing because that would be easy to forget i feel like i've almost done that a lot of times and uh i put on this like i think windbreaker it's like totally not breathable i thought maybe it was like not a windbreaker but it was actually like breathable rain jacket and i'm not quite sold on whether it is or not so i'm a little warm but i'd rather be warm and long sleeves and a hood than i would be like sunburned so okay rudder is free we're good to go seat boom sweet also, Brandon's going to be joining Christian and I as well. You guys have seen Brandon in only a couple videos. Real cool dude. He's driving all the way out from Granbury. Put this rod in this holder right here for two seconds. Boom. Much better idea. Oh, talk about stability. Okay, look at all this water. Look at all this water, right? So, look, I guess it is draining. Okay. Okay. I see it draining. It's like working kind of slow. All right, that's the only thing is it works out the seat the seat always falls down the seat back always falls down yes i know it's a pedal drive but you got to get out past the grass before you can drop it down wow this is a lot more stained than it has been in days past now we can drop the bad boy down lock it up otherwise it likes to go crazy you get him dialed in already or what <laughs> i'm gonna work back here where people can't really hit it from the dock i'm gonna drop the mondo worm down y'all but i'm using a natural color i'm gonna dip this give this thing a little something extra spike it they say now this stuff you don't want to get on your boat clothes kayak just about anything except for your plastics so i'm just gonna mm, 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 mm. oh yeah oh gosh i can smell that and so can they you're just giving that a little bit extra scent right there and a little extra color do not spill this stuff tighten it extra tight okay let's go find some fish uh this side's in the sun and this side's in the shade so I'm gonna work my way over here and cast in the shallows first. And then I'm gonna honestly just chunk out deep for a second because I bet you some of these are, there's gotta be a deep pocket out here. I can't wait to get a graph for this boat. We're gonna, we're, that's on the list, you guys. I, I'm even commenting about it. Uh, we do have plans to get a graph for this, so just know that. All right, let's see what we're working with here. Mondo worm in the shade. Pedal drive making things real easy. Sometimes if you're using that paddle yak, you're paddling forwards then you gotta like stop yourself and get in position with this sucker you can just get straight to fish and it lets you really just focus and you can uh, scoot back and stay in position with the pedals so definitely a sick feature i'm probably working this thing too fast already <laughs> swoosh in fact i'm like in the grass which is perfect i'll just drop down right along the edge of it i don't know how deep this place gets but i have a very deep diving crankbait on i wonder if i should give this thing a shot i've been throwing that mondo one around for a hot minute um let me see if i catch the bottom with this thing right here so far so good still cruising okay okay and i think this is like an 18 or 20 foot depth diving crankbait look at all that line yeah let's see what we got here i think this is the grande recon 15 to 20 feet right here yeah well i guess i'm gonna be casting this for a second i bet i'll get some on this here hold up let me investigate what just splashed over here i don't know if that was a turtle or a fish but uh there's a very good chance it was a bass pushing bait up shallow trying to feed at the moment so oh that's good oh that was stellar way off i'm just gonna let it sink because who knows if there's a fish right there and i'm gonna get it right back where i need it yeah that was terrible textbook cast okay sweet i've had enough of that let me get right where i saw that fish now boom on the money i knew it wasn't like that terrible where would you guys be fishing in this place right now i mean literally like it's very deep out here this is probably the deepest pocket I mean, would y'all be dragging a worm like just out here in the open or throwing a deep diving crankbait? Would you be casting into the shaded shallow areas? It is uh, 90 degrees out, so I'm sure the feels like temperature is about 100 because it's been like just cranking it up another 10 degrees on the stats lately. 6.45 in the afternoon. I mean, it is like, it is a scorcher. And I'm just curious what you guys would be tossing around here. Maybe I need to like get in this stuff real far with like a crawl. I I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious your take. Let me know all right christian's on christian said he was bleeding really bad we were gonna make him a superstar and get him on video for you guys but so what, what was the what was the deal what'd you throw uh, oh the big worm yeah, that, that, like that june bug looking color purplish yeah, 
Okay. Christian's sticking to structure. He's kind of, he's doing exactly what you should do in the summertime, hit the shade, and then also kind of against the cover where they're gonna bunch up. Me, I'm just kind of casting out deep. I found a good spot where there's some shade out deep. I figure I might just uh, get lucky and find a lunker out here. But if Christian catches another, I'm gonna probably go back to that Mondo worm and uh, do exactly as he's doing and just hit some more of the shade in the shallows. All right, y'all, I am making a switch. I'm gonna toss on the weightless Sanko. I've had some luck on that bait here in the past when the bass weren't hitting anything else. So I got a little bit of confidence in it and I'm just gonna work this thing low and slow. I mean, last time it was like this, I was not even moving it. When the bite gets tough, you grab the weightless worm, man. And I wanna say last time I was using watermelon red flake, Tying a Palomar knot, by the way, for those of you that are new viewers, Palomar knot's my go-to. And I would say this is probably 15, 17 pound fluorocarbon here. Let's go ahead and uh, boom. You guys can grab these clippers at uh, Carl's Bait and Tackle. I think they're like 12 bucks, 10 bucks. I don't really recall the exact price, but they are highly worth it. Braid, fluoro, don't matter, mono, like a cinch. Okay, where's that worm? Yeah, I think I was throwing watermelon red flake uh, last time. This is black red flake, which I've just about gone through the whole packet of recently. So they'll hit this color too. They will hit this color. And I think with the slight stain, this might be a good move. So if I catch one on this and start uh, start really cranking them, I'm gonna wish I had more, but I think I've got some other lunker logs in here. Maybe like cinnamon, watermelon red flake. I might have a couple other options. This ought to do the deal right here. I'm gonna just work this slow. Give me some time, y'all. What is it? It is 726. Christian's got one fish, and, and then Brandon and I are uh, got a fat zero. So <laughs> let me see what's up with the old lunker log. What you got on there, Christian? Christian's got himself another. He's making it look like a 10 pounder. Look at this fight. Look at this fight. <laughs> Yo. Do you still got him hooked? Yeah, he does. <laughs> Nothing's going on, but we just caught, or I just caught one on a red worm. Oh! Slow. Slow day, he says. <laughs> well, he's the only one that's catching him, man. He's throwing that big worm right along the edges. I'm going to try and go deep again. Lunker log. Let's going, get it. Man. Yeah, I mean, I think if I'm not throwing the Guggen Squad line, it's a Braze X. Yeah. It's either of those. I got to be in bed by like two or something. I got I to gotta finish my video. My, I haven't even started editing today's video. You're finishing one tonight? Uh, I'm starting it as soon as I get home. Uh, Glad we got back out. We'll have to uh, hit a spot that actually produces. <laughs> that sounds good. I'm about it. Thanks for supplying the video with all its catches. <laughs> Leaving Brandon and I to get skunked out here. <laughs> Brandon's already caught some fish today though, to be fair. The weightless worm isn't producing. I might have something swimming with it. There we go. I was about to say, all right, he was going from right to left with it. First one of the day for me, and it's actually uh, probably bigger than any of the fish we've seen out of the pond today. There we go. We're hitting him in the back pocket, y'all. That's a three pounder almost. He's getting there. I let you have that for a little too long. All right, we're actually gonna be able to retrieve that. That is good news. That's what we're talking about, y'all. First catch of the night, weightless Sanko gets it done. Just like the last time we were here, although this is like less than half the size of the ones we pulled in previously. Uh, let's go ahead and get this hook out of here. All right, guys, he, just, oh, he suffered a little bit too much, I think. We're gonna get him back in the water quick. I see him trying to dart down to the bottom. That is a good sign. He was just swimming with that hook for uh, a little too long. It's hard to detect the bites when you're throwing these weightless worms. And uh, he had it for a minute before I finally got to him. So I think he's going to be okay. Normally, if they uh, are not going to make it, they won't swim off like that. You'll just see him stay close to the surface. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. But no time to keep that fish out of the water any longer than necessary to try and get some extra video. I could care less about that. I want to make sure the fish are in as good a health as possible. So with that being said, first one of the night for me. I think he's going to be just fine. Let's go ahead and catch a couple more. Yeah, I think right now I've got on this blooper and I've, I've still not caught a fish on it. I don't know if I'm working it properly. I'm either, I'm either going to do a chatterbait or a topwater right now. Y'all, I think I'm going to make the move to a chatterbait. There we go. Got a jackhammer ready to rock and roll. There we 
we go. On that blooper. Yeah, guys, my first fish ever on the blooper. That will do. I'm gonna let a little line out. Nice. I let him have it for a second, almost like a frog, which is probably not necessary, but I have no clue how to work this thing. First time ever catching a fish on the blooper. All right, man, that is exciting. I haven't been on a topwater bite in a while, so if I can get a few more fish on that blooper, I will be absolutely stoked. See you, bud. That was cool. So, you know, I think I'm using like a 7.4, like heavy or something like that rod. I got, uh, I think this is older braid that I've had spooled on this reel for a long time. So I bet you this is 30 pound. And uh, normally I'd be probably rocking 50 pound. And then we got that on the SLX DC reel. So, and the rod is a Guggen prototype by the way. So it's not like one that's readily available, but the new ones are coming out soon. And when they do, I will be one of the first to let you know. So stay looking out. If you guys want to scoop up one of these bloopers though, that was a dope little hit. You just kind of work it slow, pop it, pop. Oh. You don't work it like that. I've been mixing up the retrieve. I've been popping it a few times real fast and then I'll just do like an individual pop and let it sit. So I haven't got the cadence figured out 100%, but we're getting there. So if you guys are using like frogs at home, you're not gonna fish this where you'd be able to fish a frog. It's a little bit different, this popper style bait, but in this open water and kind of almost a mixture of the grass, I've been having some good luck. And uh, with these treble hooks, you will probably miss less fish that blow up on here there uh i'm sure the hookup ratio is much higher on this thing but we'll just have to find out this feels a whole bunch more stable i don't feel like i'm gonna fall in like i do on that one <laughs> <laughs> y'all we just got back to the bank the bite has faded after that one blooper hit and we're kind of doing a little not necessarily a comparison but brandon's gonna take uh, the old town for a whirl after just getting his hobie uh, 10.5 right here the thing is pretty sick and we're gonna get his take on it he did say he likes the stability of the uh of the old town but now this is only one model of the Hobie, so it's not fair to compare this to any model of Hobie. Just like that's not fair to compare that to any model of Old Town. They've got bigger models, etc. So let's see what he's got to say about this. And then we're going to show you a little bit more of his before we close out the video because it actually has some pretty dope features, man. Hobie, don't mess around. I like how I don't have to pull out the pedals or nothing to switch into reverse. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to show him that because that's a key thing, I think. It does feel weird now that I've been paddling back and forth to actually do a full rotation like a bike, though. Yep. But it definitely gets up and moves for sure, man. And I think yours has a bit better of a turn radius than mine. I'd have to try it out too. Like I feel like I'm turning more on the center than from a point of the rear, you know. That makes sense. I get what you're saying there, yeah. We'll get a double kayak going. <laughs> All right, we're pulling these babies back aboard, but I gotta lift my rudder, so. All right, y'all, let's bring the rudder up. Boom. Smashing into the box, just how we like it. Wait till y'all see this. Say what? That's so nuts. So nuts. And so instead of like that circular motion, like riding a bicycle, which I'm not illustrating properly. There we go. Now I think I'm getting it. It's just like straight back and forth with those pedals. It's interesting concept, and uh, I think it's supposed to be the bomb. I don't know. I feel like you are going to get caught in less grass. Yeah. I, I feel like that doesn't really, I don't know. With yours, you have to pop yours up like that whenever I'm going across something shallow. Yeah. I just oh. do it like that, and they go up against the hole of my God, boat. God dang, you just do the splits. That is cool. What Brandon was saying is that whenever I go through grass, if I don't want stuff on the prop, I literally have to unlock it and pull the motor up and rest it, right? Well, now, for him, what he does is he just splits the pedals. So let's demonstrate that, boom. And it literally rests up against the hull of the boat. So it should not catch any grass. That's the idea. Yo, with this thing, he did say that it, do so it doesn't have reverse technically, but by pulling those up and flipping them around, just pulling a 180, boom. Now when you work the pedals, you're in reverse. So some folks with these Hobies might not do that, but you can switch them right around and then boom, you're in reverse. So that's an advantage with the, uh, that's an advantage with the old town, but at the same time, it's not like this one doesn't have reverse, it's the hot swap. So you gotta take the pros with the cons on both of these things. This is a dope yak though. What, how the rudder? You rudders? have to deal to engage it. I have to manually do it on this model. Okay, makes on sense. The, on the, well, hold on now. On the 12. And oh, okay, the so that's just a steer, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. 
Brandon, Brandon just saved me, dude. I'm on the edge right here. Wow. <laughs> Six feet from. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> all right, and on that note, we better get to the trucks, y'all. It's getting too dark for y'all to see. Let's do a quick recap back at the house. Brandon, I want to thank you for coming out hey, here. All his information it, will be in the description, you guys. So check him out. We'll tell you more about his channel at the house where you can see. All right, guys, so yes, please be sure and check out Brandon's channel and page link down in the description. Real killer fishing. He's such a cool dude. Glad he made the drive out tonight. Unfortunately, he didn't get on too many fish, but like I said, he had caught some earlier today, so it wasn't a complete skunk for the day. He got to enjoy some time out on his new Hobie, and also Christian, man, definitely check him out. The information will be linked in the description as well as our kayak, which I know you guys are very excited about, and we are too, the new Sportsman 106 PDL, AKA Pedal Drive. They also have a larger 120 size. They have many different models. You guys can check them all out at the link in the description. Some are pedal, some are paddle, some are even motor driven, guys. You'll see some more stuff on these kayaks coming very soon. Devin and I are actually gonna be taking a multi-day trip with the boat soon. We're gonna not neglect the bank fishing. We're gonna get all this stuff to the channel very soon. Just know we're cranking out one a day for you guys, so we'll see you tomorrow. <gasps>